It's Adam here for PC Monitors and today I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the Dell UP2716D. The OSD is controlled by touch sensitive buttons at the right side of the bottom bezel. If you hover um, over these they don't do anything. I know some um, some touch sensitive buttons are also proximity activated, these ones aren't, but if you actually make contact with the control area, they're illuminated there. The first three buttons there are shortcut keys which you can customise in the OSD. Um, by default the first one there allows you to select the preset mode of the monitor, so there are various different options there. Um, these are gone through in a little bit more detail in the review. Some of them have various other options associated with them, for example colour space, there are various different colour space settings you can select there. And also custom colour is quite an interesting one, that gives you lots of flexibility to change various things. So you've got the, the gain controls there which are like the usual red, green and blue colour channels which you'd adjust on most monitors. Offset, which is kind of more for fine tuning. Um, hue and saturation and the, and the hue and saturation settings so you've got the red, green and blue, cyan, magenta and yellow to control there. So lots of flexibility. Second button along by default allows you to quickly adjust the brightness and contrast. You can also see there's a little energy use bar there which essentially reflects uh, the brightness of the monitor and it just lets you know how much energy you're using on the monitor based on minimum versus maximum output. You can select the source used by the monitor with the third button. And the fourth button is the main menu system and there's also a nice X, big red X, exit, which is the last button along there. And there's a little power button here which is also touch sensitive, it's recessed into the bezel a little bit and some users have actually pointed out that it's a little bit harder to use than some of the other buttons. The other ones are fairly sensitive, this one's slightly less so. Uh, I, I find them all absolutely fine to use, but um, I know some people don't like touch sensitive buttons so much. I find these ones alright. And there's also a little sort of vertical slit power indicator um, to show that the monitor's on there. You can actually if you don't like that, I don't find it very obtrusive at all, but if you don't like it, you can turn it off in the OSD, as I'll come to in a little bit. So, the main menu, as you can see, there are lots of different sections to the menu here, and lots of different things you can control. There's uh, brightness and contrast, input source, and colour, and that allows you to change the preset mode, another way of changing the preset mode. You can also change the input colour format, um, you should really just keep that on RGB, most users should just keep that on RGB. Um, there's a gamma setting, two different gamma settings, PC which uh, is supposed to target sort of 2.2 um, and Mac which is according to the old Mac standards I think it uh, targets 1.8 uh, but nowadays Macs and PCs they Really, it's uh, there's no difference between the gamma. It just depends on the uh, the setting, the uh, your workflow, really, what you should be targeting there. But it's just something that Dell monitors have had for a while there. And there's an option to reset the color, so reset all of these uh, little options here to the factory default. Next, there's display, and that has various different settings here. There's aspect ratio and that allows you to select how the image is actually displayed and this is with, with the full um, native resolution that I'm running here 2560 by 1440 it doesn't matter what you select with this, you'll get the, the your normal picture but if you select a non-native resolution um, I don't know why I've gone into NVIDIA control panel to do this because this isn't really the quickest way uh, but uh, I'm there now so I'll do it if I select the full HD resolution these some of these um, aspect ratio options will actually become relevant so set in wide 16 by 9 at the moment and that means that the 
in my non-native resolution here fills the whole screen. Auto resize does the same on this resolution, um, but it, it changes how some other resolutions are displayed. Uh, there's 4x3, which makes this resolution look completely just squashed up uh, with big black borders at the sides there. Um, but obviously, if you're actually running a 4x3 resolution, that would make it look correct without distortion. And there's a one-to-one one -one pixel mapping mode as well, which means that only 1920 by 1080 pixels are actually illuminated uh, on the screen at the moment for me. I'm just going to set this back to the native resolution and then get on with the other bits of the OSD for you. There's a monitor sleep setting and that allows you to change the behaviour of the monitor um, when it's been in standby for a little bit. So if you've turned your computer off, you can either set it so the monitor stays on and it's sort of ready to, um, to be turned on or you can uh, set it so it uh, just turns itself off after a little bit of time. So the power light will blink, it's on standby. And then it'll, uh, after a certain timeout period, I'm not sure exactly how long it is, it'll, it'll turn itself off. Or into an even lower power state, I should say. It's a sharpness control, which allows you to change the sharpness of the monitor, as you'd expect. And you can set that between 0% and 100% in increments of 10. And I find the default of 50 absolutely fine, so I just leave that as it is. There are two response time settings which were explored in the review, normal and fast. There is MST, multi-stream transport, and that is something you might activate if you've got something connected to the display port output, not the input, the output on the back of the monitor. Um, and that allows you to daisy chain multiple monitors together using display port, um, and only with one display port actually connected to your, to your graphics card. There's a little display info section here, and that just shows a few little little things about uh, what settings you're using at the moment and the, the firmware used by the monitor. So just a little reference for various things there. You can reset all of these particular options to the factory defaults with the reset display option as well. There's a PIP slash PBP, picture in picture, picture by picture selections and um, I can't show you these, I've only got one source connected to the monitor at the moment, my main computer, so I can't, I'm not really going to waste time going through all of these, but I'll just uh, show you some of the settings you have available to you. So PIP small will give you a little picture inside the picture, so say I had a games console connected via HDMI, if I selected PIP small we just show a little box with the uh, content from the games console on the screen whilst it, the rest of the screen displayed my main PC's content. And you can make that box larger by selecting PIP large. Um, and there's also two picture by picture settings. Um, one of them will maintain the aspect ratio of the source you're using and the others will try and fill up the screen as much as possible. And there are various other settings uh, associated with these as well, which I'm not going to go through because I've only got one thing connected. So yeah, you can change um, you can change the picture and picture location. So you don't have to have it in the top right, which is a default. You can have it in one of the other corners instead, if you prefer. It's USB selection. There are actually two upstream USB three ports on this monitor, and that allows you to basically uh, have two systems connected to the to the monitor and you assign each system based on based on how you've got it connected so say i had one system connected to display port which i do and another one connected to hdmi i would um i, I could uh, sort of use the usb ports um on both of those with this monitor it's explained a lot better in the uh, the manual, but uh, so it's got diagrams and everything to explain it much better than I'm explaining it here. So I definitely recommend taking a look at the manual if you're interested in this particular feature. 
there are a few audio settings, in fact one audio setting, um, and that just allows you to change the uh, source of the audio for, I think it's the picture in picture, so you can either have your main audio, uh, your main system, so my system here would be the audio source, or you could have your, your sub source, little thing with the box there as your source. There's an energy menu and that just has a few little extra settings here. Um, as I mentioned before, if you don't like the power LED for whatever reason, you can set this to off during active and that means when the monitor's on, the power indicator will be off. And also when the monitor's off, it'll be off as well. It doesn't turn on when the monitor's off or anything confusing like that. You can also choose to have various different USB behaviours um, on or off during standby and off during standby will save a bit of power um, whereas on during standby will mean you can use your USB peripherals um, or perhaps charge things via USB even if the monitor it. Um, and by off I, it means um, you've pressed the power button and turned the monitor off um, as we all know, uh, or as some of us know, it, it, it's not quite the same thing as unplugging the monitor and turning it off that way. Um, it does use a, a little bit of power, um, and that's and you can minimise that by selecting USB off during standby if, you, if you're worried about that kind of thing. You can also reset the energy settings to the factory defaults. And there's a menu part of the menu, and this allows you to change basic settings of the OSD, for example, the language it's displayed in, um, the rotation, so if you're using the monitor in portrait, you can make sure the OSD is easy to read as well, and so it'll rotate as well. You can adjust the transparency level used by the OSD as well. Um, there's a timer, an OSD timeout feature, and that's a time in seconds which you set between 5 and 60 and that's how long the OSD will remain on the screen after the last button press before it disappears um, and you can obviously just go back a couple of times with the, uh, the back or exit button if you want to just manually exit the OSD you can also lock the OSD to stop um, other people messing around with your settings or try and uh, stop them it's more, more to kind of stop kids messing around with the settings, really. Um, and you can reset these options to the factory defaults as well. There's a personalised section. And as I said earlier, there are three shortcut keys before you actually enter the main menu system. Um, before you enter this uh, main section of the OSD, sorry. And you can customise what they are. So, as you'll recall, the first button before I entered the main section of the OSD, let you select a preset mode, but if you prefer you can have that uh, doing various other things as well. USB select switch might be useful if you're um, using both of the upstream ports of the monitor um, and you want to select which USB ports you're using. And I know I'm not explaining this very well. I am sorry, it's not really a feature I use, but uh, I know it is it's something that some people will find useful. And as I said, I don't use it, so I'm just going to change that back to preset modes for myself. Oh yeah, and if, if you want, you can, um, you can have it so it just quickly activates a specific preset. So you might just use two presets um, for different times of the day or different applications or whatever, and you can easily switch between those two. Um, perhaps by having shortcut key 1 and shortcut key 2 each set to the respective preset and you can reset the personalization settings to the factory default as well finally there's others and this has one absolutely infuriating feature which fortunately is off by default and that's the button sound and I don't know why they've even added this to be honest um, but if you turn it on Every time you press something on the on the OSD, it makes a strange beeping noise. I don't know how it'll sound on the video, but to me it sounds like a microwave rather than a monitor. Um, I guess if you if you're visually impaired, that could be useful feedback to have. But uh, 
Um, I, I'll, I'll leave that off myself anyway. Um, there's DDC slash CI, so the plug and play functionality of the monitor basically, and it lets uh, software control uh, the different settings for you if you, if you want. Um, I'd leave that enabled unless you've uh, got some strange legacy system which doesn't support that or whatever. There's an LCD conditioning feature um, and that just gets rid of, as it says here, mild cases of image retention. Now I didn't notice any image retention on the monitor in the sort of testing I was doing. Um, so it's not something I'd worry about specifically, but it can happen, um, not, not just specifically to this monitor, you know, you can get it on various different monitors. And if you do notice a little bit of image retention, you can just get the monitor to cycle through various different colours for as long as you want, um, different shades, so it does black, white, red, green, blue, yellow, I think, lots, lots of different shades. Um, and you can just leave the monitor doing that uh, for a little bit and then hopefully it'll get rid of your image retention for you. You can reset all of these settings to the factory defaults and you can also reset everything, so all of the settings on the OSD to the factory defaults. And there's also just a little, a little reminder here of the port that you're using and the resolution and refresh rate of the monitor as well. So there you have it. That was the OSD on-screen display menu system of the Dell UP2716D. Hope you enjoyed the video and be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info.